Okay, as we're winding down the uh, conversations here, and we're going to jump right into session two. Um, and so, again, we're talking about the five keys, keys to growth, the five things, uh, the areas that we have moved forward here in uh, at Victory Family Church that pertain to us, what has worked for us, what we're talking about. So, um, we talked about the ramp, having a strong ramp. Well, now we're going to be diving into the service. Uh, the service part and what that looks like. And so um, as I jump into this, I wanted to make a couple uh, clarifications for a second. Uh, is that there's pens in the back if you do need one. Can the word with it? Over there. That was the only thing you wanted me to say? Uh, many things. Oh, yes. And then uh, if for some reason I get squirrely on you, um, Sozo is our high school ministry. That's the name of the high school ministry. And then Echo is our middle school ministry. So if you hear me say those two words, that I'm just used to talking to our, our core. So middle school is Echo, and then high school is Sozo. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead, uh, and we're going to jump right into session two, the, the service. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, about two years into the ministry, Alyssa and I, we, we were just overseeing middle school at the time. And, and so, you know, you're, you're always passionate you're excited, you think about all the ways that you can spend money, and if you just have money, how you can make things move, and you're just like, it just, it just, does it come easy to us as youth pastors? Come on, like, we can just, thank you, senior pastors, we can easily spend the money, and so uh, I remember processing and thinking, so at the time, we didn't have, like, lights, we didn't have haze or smoke or whatever, you know, we didn't have all those things, we, we had worship, that was it, and, and so I just remember thinking, gosh, if we if we got lights, we could move the needle. I mean, 25 percent growth right off the bat. Right? So this is game changer. And and so you know, I I built this whole proposal, and I this is how we're going to steward and then this money. If you've ever purchased lighting equipment, then you know I don't throw out a dollar amount. You know that you're going you're swinging the bat, okay? And so uh, I, I get before executives, and I somehow talk them into it, and. And so they, they give me this huge chunk of money to buy lighting equipment, and we install it, and it did nothing, okay? <laughs> and, and so uh, it did not move the needle. It did not drive things further. Did it enhance the service? I bet it did. Yeah, it did. Uh, was it what changed the service? No, it didn't. If I could go back and steward that money again, I would never invest it in the lighting and, and the haze and the smoke. And in due time, probably, yeah, because you know you get critical mass and you got some more momentum and those things help. And, and, but I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't do it. In, and so um, it didn't move the needle. I thought it would. But what does move the needle is these three things. Vision, faith, and system. That will equal growth. Vision, faith, and systems. Those will equal growth. And maybe you've heard Pastor Chris Hodges say that you're only as healthy as your systems. You can translate that to every area of your life, right? Um, and, and so you're only as healthy as your systems. And so with you, leader, who is going to cast vision like you? This is art. It's going to be you. You're, they're going to do half or 25% of the passion that you're going to bring with the vision. Uh, who is the one that is going to the mountain like Moses? And, and, and you've got the faith for what God is doing. And you're sharing that to the leaders. You're sharing that to the kids. And, and so I'm going to talk today uh, about our service flow. And I'm sharing systems in this session. So uh, it's going to be heavy on systems. And so, um, But you've got to understand, you've got to translate this, that nobody cares about the what. They care about the why. Yeah. I'm going to be talking a lot about the what in this session. That's not what's going to move people. It's the why. In fact, the why, you could say, are the people, um, people of a policy, right? 80% of people care about the why. 20% care about the what. So this session, you might be like, oh, my goodness, Pastor Ben. Like, let's move it along a little bit. But I'm telling you that you need systems. Because systems help you shepherd people. Yeah. Systems help you have movement in your congregation, with your students, with your leaders. They are so important. Okay? Super big. Super big. Um, so, but you've got to partner. You've got to translate it for you with vision and faith. You've got to do that. 
You've got to get excited about it, and you've got to talk about the why. In other words, the people, the heart, and how they're being impacted. Because when people catch that, well, they'll come and do whatever they need to do. Let me say it this way. Uh, let's just say, because right across the road, they're building like all these houses and housing developments and things like that. Let's just say, pretend, that they were building a hospital over there. Okay? Hey, leaders, I need you all to go. We, we got to get shovels and rakes, and we're going to go do this. We're going to build something. But I don't want to tell you what that something is. Chances are you're probably like, I don't really care. I want to work that hard. I got to do what? Like, you want me to paint something? What? Like, okay. But if I told you, listen, we're building a children's hospital right over there. And, and, and so, and all these people over there, we're going to see healing. We're going to see them get ministered to, and, and, and loved ones get to come together, and, and and oh, I'm telling you, the impact that we could do, then you, you're probably more likely to say, what do you need me to do? What do you, and, and so don't ever leave with the what, leave with the why, the vision, the heart, the stories of the impact that God is doing, okay? So that's basically there, right there. You've got to leave with that. You've got to couple it with faith, but you've got to have strong systems. And so I'm just going to share with you what our systems are, and, and I'm excited to hear about what God is doing in your communities, because I, I promise you, I'll borrow it, I'll steal it, maybe I'll give you credit, you know, so, but, but again, you can take anything that we're doing, make it, make it yours, and I'm just telling you what worked, um, and so let's talk about the service, the flow, specifically in the service, so you've got the whole funnel, but we also have a flow in our service, our service is evangelist, evangelistic by nature, and so in other words, when you come into the room, you're going to have structured free time in our context. And here's what we're doing in that structured free time. We've got hype music that's um, more welcoming to you. I'm not playing like church pop, okay? I'm not playing wow, uh, 1998. That's not, we're not doing that. And so if you are doing that, I'm sorry. Probably should stop doing that. You'll see growth rates. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But, but we're doing things that are, are, again, welcoming you into the environment. It's, it's a wide net. Think, think about it. Um, this is not the time in our service that you're hearing much about Jesus. Although we're all saved, we're great. But again, let me be very clear. We're not doing things that are provoking sin and provoking lust. I'm not doing that. It's still a wide net. These are secular songs. Again, there's a very clear line, and I'm not going to step on the line, okay? I'm not that kind of leader. I believe that you should have standards, um, but you, you do what God's calling you to do, okay? That's just where I'm at. And so I do that. Uh, in this, we do trendy games, um, nine square, uh, not really cornhole so much, but, you know, that's sprinkled in there. And so anything to get the kids going, got the ball when it was hot, but that, you know. But if you've got something that's working for you, please tell me because I think we all need those ideas, right? We all run out of, of what it is. But we've got a rotation of what we're doing, little tights, basketball, hoops, you know, whatever we can do to just have a blast. If you're excited about it, they're excited about it, okay? Maybe it's video games. Maybe it's these things. But what are those parts in your structured free time that's allowing students to have connection? It's overwhelming when you come and you don't know anybody at first. You kind of want to hide. You need to be able to blend in. And yes, our hope is that you get connected. We'll talk about those things. But in structured free time, again, it's a wide net to make you feel warm and welcome. And then we move from that into our service. And so we do our, our announcements through video. We do a video announcements. And I'm going to share why we pivoted to this and why we changed this. We do video announcements. And in there, we do our offering and our tithe, OK? So we do video announcements, and then we move into praise and worship. Um, the way we structure our praise and worship is we do um, praise, and then a medium grade worship song, or more on the praise side. Again, it's a, it's a ramp. The reason why we do that is because we enter his presence with thanksgiving. Uh, sometimes you've got to trick your kids into actually speaking God's word, so we do that through worship, right? And so, so it's amazing what God does in praise and worship in that environment. And right after that, we exhort. So in our context, we love the flow and, and whatever God's speaking in that moment. And so we take that time and we flow for about a minute or like really not long. You want to be super brief because again, you've got all these people, you just, when two or three gather in his name, his spirit's here, right? 
So we don't have to question is God here. We know that he's here. That's what the word says. God's here. Well, let's shoot. Let's take advantage of this moment, God. What are you saying to us? And you can't miss it when you're encouraging somebody. You know what I mean? And you have a strong scripture and you get the leader that just, boom, sets that table and then you slide right into the message. Because you set the table. And what we found, what I've seen in our context, and maybe you've seen this, is, is often you'll do worship. You're, I mean, you're in the presence of God. You've got the feelings. They could feel the subwoofer, so God was there for them, right? Like, more sub, the power of God's in the room. Like, that's it. And so they're moving. They're like all crazy. They're getting wrecked. It's just, oh, God's here. And, and then we're going to do 15 minutes of announcements and kill it. And so we just had to remove that. We had to get away from that. And so we, we stopped doing that um, to move out of that uh, uh, immediately because the table's already set. If I'm going to do anything, it's like uh, if I'm not speaking, I'm transitioning the other communicator to give the, the congregation who, who's up, right? Um, or it's a quick bumper video that's short and sweet because we're not going to hang out very long. we got to get right into the mess. I'm good there. The minute you get on your phone, the minute you get on Instagram and TikTok, and it is so easy, you get that text, you're gone. Right, but I, but I got you here in the presence of God. Let's 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 maximize that. So we jump into that. Uh, we go to the message. At the end of the message, I don't go right into an altar call. And now our services are evangelistic by nature, so we're going to do an altar call. In our context, we love the ramp back in the music. Um, and so I'm going to talk a lot about music here in a moment. But we ramp right back in the music because because I don't. For me, you got to do you and what works for you. Every communicator is different, right? For me, uh, I don't think we always have to come to Jesus in the doom and gloom moments, you know. And so, um, but maybe the message is the right thing, and what God's put on your heart, and you gotta, you know what I'm saying. Anybody that communicates, then you you can translate that, okay? Uh, but but we go into another song. This is more of a worship, it could be a praise, depending on what we're feeling and, and what we were led to do in that message. Um, and so, right after that, I'm going to exhort. The pastor exhorts, the minister exhorts in that moment, what does God speak? So I know we studied to show ourselves to prove we came with a plan, we were prepared. Youth leader, be prepared. They know when you're not, okay? So we came prepared, but in that moment, I'm asking God, what are you saying to the room right now? Lord, Holy Spirit, what did I forget? What did I overlook? Who do you want me to see? Whatever that is, I'm just asking God, and we minister, and then I go into a salvation call, and we get kids saved. It doesn't, it's not always me, sometimes it's leaders that we're developing, um, and so we give them a shot and be like, hey, here, here you go, big boy. Go get it, girl. You know what I'm saying? And so like, have at it. Get a shot. And, and, and so I don't always have to lead people to Jesus. We still see people come to Jesus. It's awesome. And they get that opportunity to have that Super Bowl moment. And it's that coaching moment. It's incredible. And then we go back into a praise song. So we actually replay the first song that we opened with. That the kids love, that's hype, and they're very energetic, and we celebrate what God has just done because all of heaven just is rejoicing right now for you. And that's our culture. And so that's what that has worked for us, and that's our service. Right after that song, our leaders push us to small groups, and we do small groups in the service. So um, in our high school ministry, Sozo, we give about 30, 35 minutes to small groups on a good day. Um, I'm not perfect. And so I try my best to keep my message 30 minutes in high school. And so uh, any communicator in the room, that you, you know the struggle, okay? And so you've got, I don't know, we're going to be short today, and then you've got a lot to say, okay? And so something happens, we blame God, you know, and so, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so the word was really moving, and so, but we just circled that point three times. And, and, and so, you, you know, you've got like a 30-minute message, hopefully. Uh, and then we get about 35 minutes of small group on a good day, okay? I'm not perfect. I know you're not perfect. But I'm just telling you that that's ideally the way that it should run. In middle school, we do a 15-minute message and about 15 to 20 minutes of small group time in the service, every single service. And so, uh, and, and what helps us structure that, again, in Habakkuk 3, you write the vision plain so that others can run with it. So we put that aside planning center. That's our tool for the leaders that need to know the structure and then, so we use Planning Center to help align us and keep us married to the plan. Again, we go in with the plan. Uh, we're studying to show ourselves the fruit. But, but, you know, you might make some changes and some things like that. And, and that's okay, too. Try your best to have a good plan. And that's what we do. 
Um, so I want to talk about the pastor and, and worship. Again, if, uh, if, if you've got a question, I, I'll try to save us some time at the end to answer group questions with everybody. Um, so you can write that down to keep us moving. We're going to go into the pastor and worship. The pastor and worship. Um, you know, they, they say, and you've probably seen this, you've probably studied this yourself. People come to church for two reasons. The pastor's passion and relationships. The pastor's passion and relationships. In our context, we do small groups. That's really where our relationship is. I'm going to dive into that a little bit deeper. Everybody needs known, but I can't know everybody. Okay? So we're going to dive into that to a, into a minute, uh, in a minute. But, but so the pastor's passion and then the relationships. Uh, leader, you, you've got to have some passion. You've got to have some energy. I'm not feeling it today. Well, then maybe like, I don't know, listen to Elevation and listen to Pastor Stephen Furry give you one of his hype things, one of his hype songs called, You are love, you can do it, you know, and you just get juiced before. Okay, I don't know. But you've got to do what you've got to do to have the energy and the excitement and the passion. You've got to bring that. Um, it is so important, leader. Your passion must be real and not fake because they can smell fake from a mile away. Um, this generation loves authenticity. You know it. I know it. So be real and be passionate. Show that energy. Um, show show the love. Let it come through. You know? So, so if, if you're a yellow, have your ups and flows of your message or whatever it is, but have that passion. Don't be afraid to grab the student and say, I stick and love you. I'm glad you're here. I don't know any other ministry in the church world that you can yell at a student's ear ah! and get away with it. You know? <laughs> and they love it. Like you can just do it and it's like, oh, this is Great. And so have that passion, have that energy, let them see it. Let them see your love for them, the love of the Father through you. So leader, I just encourage you, get your head game going so that you can have that passion, okay? Because this generation loves authenticity. And they say this, that, that when you're church planting, they say this through ARC, that the first two hires a church plant should make, and it's crucial to your growth, is the worship leader and the children's pastor. Those are your two crucial hires. What does that tell me as a youth leader? Your worship's got to be on point. Your music's got to be on point. You've got to have good, trendy praise and worship. And so I'm, I'm here to share with you what we've done. I'm not perfect. Okay? I'm just going to tell you what's working for us. And, and, and so... Um, that's super, super important. So we had a we had a student, and I'm sure that you do. As soon as I say this, you probably picture a whole bunch of faces. We got a student that just walks around with his headphones on all the time. I'm like, bro, what are you listening to? <laughs> like, I'm preaching. You don't need to be on ESPN. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. but like, like walk around. He's got the music on. He's got the, the headphones. And he, he's got good quality speakers. You know, he knows music better than me. He knows what's good. He knows what isn't good. He's in tune. I don't, I might be getting older. I am getting older, okay? Trendy is dying for me. Like, you know, I'm like, where's the New Balance shoes with the Velcro, okay? And so, it's just going to slip on easier, and I'm going to get grass stains on them anyway. So, <laughs> but for your kids are the friends. Like, no, no they're going to be me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but your students, they know music. They know music better than you do. They know what's in. Um, they're, they're sitting around the dinner table. You see them when you're out to dinner with your family. They're disconnected. They're in a the car. They're listening to music. They know music. So important. So you've got to have good music. I'm going to tell you how, how we have great worship and great sound. It starts with you finding the energetic leader. The right leader matters. It, it really does. Just like you minister have to have some energy and some passion and be excited about the things of God, your worship leader's got to be excited. If you're going to give your worship leader 30 minutes of your service, it's got to be a home run. It's got to be a home run. So you've got to be, this is crucial of what you're doing there. 30 minutes is a really big deal. Have that energetic leader that knows how to own the room with humility. Now, there's many biblical standards that you should follow with this person. You should be very careful with this person. You should know that this person, uh, they, they don't have an alternative agenda. They've got God's agenda. Yeah. 
and they've got your senior pastor's heart, and they've got your heart. And, and so they're, they're not there for the, and, and so uh, we're all human, but you're doing your best to bet this person, but they got to be energetic, passionate, and a go-getter, and I'm telling you, because that person's going to go 100%, and everybody else in the room's going to go 20. And they're going to feel weird jumping around, being crazy and passionate, while everybody else is like, where's the tambourine? You know what I'm saying? So, like, happy day. And so, um, it really matters. You've got to find the energetic leader, and then you've got to pick the right songs. So I want to tell you how to pick the right songs. This is what has worked for me. This is how we stay trendy. This is what I've instructed our teams to do and how to lead. And so we go to the YouTube. How many of you, you know that YouTube is where your kids are at, yeah. right? That's the number one place for kids. They don't have a Spotify subscription, okay? So they're on YouTube. My own kids are trying to get on YouTube and I'm like, I, I hate the ass. I digress. Okay. And so, but but they're on YouTube. They want to be on YouTube. That's where they are. They're, they're leaning into the music. And so what I do, when a song comes out, I go and I look at the views. In the first three months, where are the views? I am not a super trendy person, but I need people around me to tell me what's hot. Talking about this song? Okay, whatever. All right. I'm just trying to break ass a little bit. And so I look at the views. In the first three months, are you close to a million views on that song? Culture is telling you right there that song is trendy. That's it. But but my worship leader, and I'm not like not my not my worship leaders, okay? But worship leaders, because they're so musically inclined, and they love the music, and they've got an ear for it, they can mislead you. They can tell you it's oh, but you know that song is so good. Oh, because I hear all the different things that they're doing and the way that they break it down, and they'll tell you that it's good, but it's actually not good. In fact, I would just challenge you, take a look at a lot of the songs that you're playing, and if you go to YouTube and you look at the views, if they're in like the 11K, okay, there you go. And it's been out for a year or two years. It's not a trendy song. Culture doesn't say it's great. It's not something that people want to listen to. Maybe you want to listen to it. Maybe your leader wants to listen to it. Maybe they have a moment in the presence of God with that song. But you've got to guard your service. You've got to make sure that it's, a, it's an on-ramp for students. That's what I do. Okay, I'm just telling you what I do and how, how I do. So you got to do what works for you. So in the first three months, does it have almost a million views? I look at that. In a year, it should definitely have a million views, maybe two or three. And then the song has expired to me. This is my opinion, but this is what has worked for us. We stop playing a song if it's three years old. It's really good. It's, it's still got a good shelf life. Not enough to the youth students. Why? Because they're walking around with the headphones on. They know what's good. They're dialed in, okay? And so when a song hits three years, we ax it no matter what, okay? And, and so hopefully we caught the window of when it was hot. Maybe we did it. Maybe it was a bop. Now it's not a bomb, or whatever you want to call it today, whatever your kids say is the new sling. I, sling. I don't even know, okay? And so you, good luck keeping up with that. And so, um, so that's so important, and that's, that's what we do. Our, our songs have that kind of shelf life, and, and i got to tell you, it's okay to have some repetitiveness. Um, when your kids learn the songs, they'll lean in even more. And when the songs sound good and it's already a good song, you're letting culture tell them tell you what's good. You might need to do the other things that fit your environment, like vet it for theology, make sure the lyrics line up. I would first start with that cri for criteria, and then I would say, does this line up with where I feel is comfortable and what I want to do in our youth group? You know, and so you're going to have to translate that for you and what fits your environment, but that's what we do, and, and our leaders do an excellent job. Thank you, guys, the three of you in the room, and so it's, it's just awesome, and um, they're doing that. We had a we, we, in fact, I want to tell you, because if you struggle with being trendy, this has helped me, um, because I'm not trendy by no means, but I surround myself with people who are. We had we a student um, that when he walks into the room, you know, your drip, whatever that means, is on point, okay? And so, it, it, it's uh, probably already missed it. Some of you are like, you missed it then, that's dead. It's gone. <laughs> but you know the struggle, I'm not alone. And, and so, uh, I'm like, bro, I love what you're wearing some of those things. Hey, would you, can you get me three outfits? I'm gonna be speaking here a couple of times. Like, would you just pick me out three things? He thought, he thought, oh my gosh, this is incredible. He went, he picked me three things, sent me all the links and said, you buy this, Pastor Ben, you're, you're, I'm telling you, it's gonna, you're gonna be good. You're set, okay? So here I am, all right? <laughs> <laughs> that will help you. You don't have to be the trendy person. You just find the students that are not in, okay? 
and then you and then you you keep in tune with that. Who is next in the generation? I don't know that I'm going to jump on board with like the baggy pants and stuff like that. And the 90s look is coming back. I might let that go. All right, I might be out of the trend for a little bit. I just I don't have it in me. I'm still rocking the skinny jeans. It is what it is. Okay, so we'll see what's next. But um, so they really helped me out, and I think that that'll help you. Uh, but if a song is three years old, then it is too old. You've missed the window, it's okay, jump on what's next. Um, and, and like I said, sit through, sit through the lyrics to see if it's what's gonna line up with you and your culture. Um, but excellent music and energy is a must. Excellent music and energy is a must. And so maybe you're in the room and you're like, hey, that's easy for you to say because you're a big church. You got all these people. I'll tell you um, something that actually didn't work well for me. So when Alyssa and I took over our high school ministry in 2019, um, it was a great, in our momentum, I told you about that girl that came and God captured her heart, and I mean, we had such a rant. It's just awesome what God was doing in the ministry. Well, we also had a ton of leaders that left the worship team. And, and so we had Nate Bell that's over there, and, and so bless his heart, he was leading, and it was him and two other people. Um, and that was it. And he was serving everybody. We didn't, have, we didn't even have a full band. We didn't. And so we have, we have this dude that convicts sometimes, okay. And so, uh, and, and then we have Nate that was just pouring out his heart, and so we ran tracks. We ran tracks, and we supplemented the other instruments, and we made sure it sounded good. Yeah. I mean, it sounded real good. And you had, we had the right leaders on the stage with the right energy owning the room, and I'm telling you, we didn't have a shortage of students. Right. I'm telling you, we had 10, 12, 11 first time guests, all of those services, and we had a band of, I think one week you did it by yourself. Like there was no other people, him and tracks, and he's standing there, bless his heart, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's standing there giving it all that he's got, and people know, yeah. but it sounded good. Listen, when you've got Wolford, when you've got something in your room, it covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> God is moving in their eyes. They feel the Lord tonight. Like, you know what I'm saying? When there's, when there's sub in the room, and so, and when you've got the right heart and the right passion, and that comes through, and so I just encourage you, we've done that in multiple environments, and sometimes it's not always perfect. Anybody in here need some leaders in their life? Oh, we're in church. Okay. <laughs> and so, but we're always in need of leaders. You're never going to feel like you've got enough, and, and, and so... That's something that we've done because they know music. And I, I just got to tell you, don't, if you've got somebody who's like a timid drummer or a timid vocalist and they're still learning, give them the on-ramp to learn. Yeah. But I wouldn't practice on your, on your super group, okay? I would give them behind the scenes as, as we're leading up the practice, you know leader, and we're going to have tracks for the drums, okay? But so and so at rehearsal, you're going to be playing your guts out for. I'm going to be encouraging you. I'm going to be your biggest fan. I'm going to tell you what you can do, not what you can't. This is God's calling on your life. You can do it. Go give them heaven. But I'm also not going to let you bring down the room when we go into that. And so there's times when we've tracked things. We don't always do that. But I'm telling you, it, it helps your music be really good, really on point. So don't sacrifice on your sound and the things that you're doing, because it, if you're going to put 30 minutes in your service, at least, it's got to be good. It's got to be really good and really intentional, and that's, that's just something that we've done. And so, um, again, that's our worship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide here into um, small groups. Small groups is our secret sauce. Small groups are, are so important. It's huge. Small groups, they are the primary disciples for the students in our context. For me, I can't know everybody, but everybody needs to know. Yeah. When you walk into the room, when you walk into one of our campuses, I'm not there. I can't be there. I want to be, but I can't. So everybody needs to know. And so the dynamics of ministers, I think if we're all honest with ourselves, is to care for everyone. That is it, because that's your heart, because you love people. That's why you're in ministry. That's why you want to be here. You want to care for everybody. But you need to see all people and ask yourself the question, am I actually seeing who God wants me to see in this service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's your job, leader. Everybody needs to know. You can't know everybody. And who's God putting on your heart that as the leader you need to spend your service with investing in that person, whoever that is? 
and your leaders are leading, your leaders are discipling, they're running the things for you, and you're able to, because if you don't do that, I have found there won't be growth. Because you can't do everything, and in fact, if you try, you're going to end up being tired, you're going to wear yourself thin, and the more you grow, maybe you're very charismatic, and, 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 and so you're really great at communicating, that's not my gift, okay, so I communicate okay, um, it's not something I'm bad at, but maybe you're like really magnetic in that area, and you're drawing in all of these people, and that's awesome, and if you try to care for everybody, you're going to get tired, and I want to see you make it, and so chances are you're already working through leaders, but it is crucial because it's the quickest way to burn yourself up and shrink the ministry as you try to be a hero. That's it. We need to just make heroes. Be the hero maker. So what is a small group for us? Each small group in our context, I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly. And then again, if you have questions, you can ask. Okay. Uh, a small group for us, each small, small group is made up of two to three leaders. Um, and they commit for four years. It's a big ask. It's a big ask. It's the biggest portion of our service. You commit four years, and so we break into groups by grade, gender, and zip code. That's how we break into small groups. Now, pending the size of our campuses, we've got one campus that runs nine students, so I know what it's like. Um, each, each one is different, but, but and, and when we're fully running in our model of how we've designed it, we break into those three. Here at, at the Cranberry campus at Sozo, we've got three ninth grade girl groups. And so those are broken in by zip code because you start to multiply your grades. It, it makes sense, and that's and, that, and I want you to be able to do life outside of the church. We should be able to go and do those things. Very important. So um, that's how we do it. We assign leaders to have the same group of students for those four years. It's a big ask, huge. It's so that you can build the solid connections with each other and the leaders. It's so crucial that they commit to four years um, with everything that's shifting in a student's life. Your parents' marriage, your school, your friend group, all of these things are shifting. Puberty is wrecking your body. What is going to be the constant? Small group leader. Small group leader. So important. We put a lot of stock into that. It's such a big deal. Um, and so there you are, the constant. It's a big ask, but we ask this of our best leaders. It, 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 it is no shock to the team that they are the cream of the crop. They are the ones that we would say, hey, I, I'm delegating authority to you, leader, to minister to these kids, to pastor them, to be dialed in. That's, that's what we do in our context. And so now, this, just to make it clear, this is not the, the mafia. Like, I know Pastor John in our context, he's like the godfather. You know, he's, not, he's the Italian stallion, you know, Pastor John. Um, but we are not the mafia here. And so if you want out, well, we're going to give you that out. That's better. It's not going to hurt the kid that way. I'm not here to do damage to the kids. I'm here to, I'm here to help you walk in what God has for you and help them walk in what God has for you. And so that's okay. We're, we're, we'll get you out. We'll help transition you to what's next, what's right. If you're moving to, to another city, whatever that is, we're going to get you plugged in. We're going to minister to those leaders. But it's important that you've got the same small group leaders for four years. what we do in our context. Um, so small groups, they meet after the message for 30 minutes. And again, 15 minutes, pending the two environments, high school and middle school. And so we provide those leaders with, with icebreak questions, icebreakers, and, and then um, content regarding the message. This is not a time for our leaders to re-preach. They got a message from me. Okay, they got it. Uh, this is for them to drive the nail in the coffin if needed, but if you need to go a whole different direction and minister to a kid on what they actually need, and the struggle that they're going through, when? Right? If you came questioning your faith today, and I talked about whatever, well, that leader needs to help you. They're the general practitioner, right? They're navigating and helping minister to you, so that's so important. Uh, so we, we equip them with that, but they can derail. Um, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% of the students talking, 20% of the leader talking. We really try to guard that. Um, and I know that we, we're all lead ministries, and if you do small groups, that's a hard thing to get your leaders to walk in. That is. Um, it's very hard. And so but that's, that's this challenge, the struggle. If you figure it out, you tell me. Uh, let me know your secret sauce to that one, okay? Um, but they are our number one disciples, and they know that. So there's a couple systems that we have attached to that that I want to share with you. Um, the, one of the systems is our VIP, um, our VIP process. So it is our front door. 
We all have a front door, right? Students coming into the ministry, but I want to ask you, leader, how are you making sure that you're navigating that front door numerically? How are you tracking that? Because what you don't measure, you can't move. So you've got you've got to know your sheep. You've got to know how many people are coming. You've got to count them. And so we have a VIP process. Um, I want to talk about this for a second. And I, and I think that uh, Alyssa and Mariah, if you could hand out. I, I just printed enough for one for each table. But if you all have it. You all have the QR code, and you can download it yourself. You can see it later. Okay, so it's there for you. It's the VIP report. So I want to just tell you what it is real quick. Again, it's a four-week process for our students. Uh, let me tell you why. So they, uh, I believe it was Hartford or Stanford. I don't remember, I don't remember which one on the sub, but, but anyway, they did a study that if you go to, if you go to an organization four times, and you have a good experience those four times, chances are you're likely to say that that's your place. Let me give you an example. If you go to Chipotle, thank you, Jesus. If you go to Chipotle, Mo's guy, no? All right, okay, Chipotle. Hallelujah, praise God. And so you, if you go to Chipotle four times, you've got a good experience, chances are when you go the fifth, if you have a bad experience, you're like, like you know, these guys are always on point. Like, this is my place. And so what we want to do in our context is we want to give our students, our first-time guests, an intentional plan that they don't even know that small group leaders are running behind the scenes. Small group leaders are walking them through this. Four weeks of intentionality to make sure that you have a strong, excellent experience. Um, and so here's what those four weeks are. The first week when you come, you're connected to that small group leader right away in service. This happens. They happen. It happens that night. You're connected. You're plugged into that small group. Now, behind the scenes, from a data standpoint, we do get your phone number. We've got your number. And so uh, that's good. We, we've got all of the details. But the small group leaders also being proactive and getting your phone number. That's their goals. How do I get your phone number? Because they're going to text you through this next week. And when they send text messages to build relationship, or the younger the student is, with mom and dad in there, whatever that looks like, right? Um, they're going to build a relationship with them, and they're going to end every single text message with a question. Why? To solicit a response. You ever get that text from your student? Hey. And you're like, hey back, what are you doing with that, right? Like, and so we all get that. Solicit a response. Um, one of the things I like to say is, is there anything I can pray for you about Here's what's really cool, and I'm going to share that thought later at the end of our VIP. Really big deal. Is there anything I can pray for you about? But I also ask her, hey, are you coming back next week? I'm going to be here. I can't wait to see you. Because you made a friend. That's what our small group leaders are doing. You made a friend. I'm your friend. You might not know everybody, but you know me. I'm going to get you connected. So on week two, when they do come back, because you've been texting them, you know that they're coming, well, then you have them meet the family. You do a tour. I'm not talking about the tour of your facility. Who cares about your stinking facility? It's about the people. Give them a tour. Meet the family. That's what we call it. Meet the family. And you try to get that student connected to as many people in your family as possible. Go back to the green room and meet the worship leaders because they are approachable. They are helpful. Man, they would love to spend time with you and get to know you. Go meet the production guys. Go, go meet the other small group leaders. Go meet the minister. Go meet the, the structure of people and all the things and whoever it is. You connect them with as many people as possible because when they come back the third week, they feel like family because they are family. Yeah. And in fact, on that third week, because you've been texting them that whole time, you've got the relationship, small group leader. And so as you've been texting them, when they come back the third week, that's when we give them the gift. And so we give all of our students a T-shirt. Uh, if it's high school, we give them the Sozo. If it's middle school, we give them the Echo shirt. And so why? Because I don't want my words to be empty. You are family, and you belong here, and I want you to have the family pride. Mm -hmm. or the excitement, not prideful with, with humility, but you know that, oh, that belong here. This is my home. I can set up shop here. These people love me, and they're going to fight for me. That's why we give them a gift. And then on the fourth week, the fourth week, we do prayer and coffee. So the, the small group leader is making sure that they come back to a fourth week. Maybe it's not coffee. Maybe it's a chocolate milk. I don't know. Maybe it's a mop. You do you. Okay? Whatever, whatever's going to get your student to come. And you sit down with that student. 
at the campus, this is what we do, we sit down at the campus in a public place where it can be seen because we don't leave the students alone. And so where are we at an eye shot of other people to help protect and guard the student? And we sit down with them and then you bring back up, hey, that thing that you shared with me on week one, how's that going for you? What's God doing? How can I help you? You're just intentional. I know you got a whole group that you met before or after service. You made it intentional to dive into that kid's world. That's our VIP process. And, we, and so it, it's hard because every small group leader has 12 kids. Well, how do you know where, where is who? And, and you've got this honor of students coming and things like this. It's confusing and I've got kids and, and I'm trying to navigate my own job, my own dysfunction in my life and God help me, right? And so we send out a VIP report that shows you each of those students and where they're at in four weeks so that the small group leaders can dial in and find out. And we run that through our system. We use the ministry platform. So that's what we do to track that and to move those students along so those leaders can come ready and aimed, good to fire, okay? So that's a really big deal. Um, and so we, we saw 34% of our first-time guest retention because of that. That's pretty high. Um, and that's, it's remarkable. That really helped us. Um, the next thing I want to go into is our, our small group tracking. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I missed it. Our shepherding report. Because, again, your small group leader is disciple. They're disciples. You've got 12 kids. You've got your own busy life. You've got a world that's going crazy, right? Or maybe, leader, you've got a smaller youth group, and you are the small group leader too, okay? Whatever the context is. Um, how are you moving those students spiritually? How do you even know? And so we, we helped our small group leaders know how to aim at each service. How to aim. And so every single after every single service, uh, we update our systems, and, and we, we give it to small group leaders on a clipboard. When they come in, we got a wall of clipboard. They go get their, their clipboard. They've got all of these things on it. We also send it to them digitally. But when they walk in, they've got a couple uh, areas that they're looking to move students. Again, you have this, okay? And so you've got your student name, and then you've got their last attended service. So when you're texting all of your students, how do you know who to text? The one you haven't seen. Yep. Start there. You can't text all these kids all the time, and it's crazy, and people attend like, basically once a month, right? So you're barely going to see your students, so you've got, you don't really have 12 students, you've got like 48 students. How do I know where you guys are all at? This is nuts. Yeah. How do I know who to text? Who haven't I seen? Dial in there. Start there so we can do the last attendance service. Uh, in our context, if you make it three weeks, that's a major red flag. Three weeks in a student's world, hello, a lot has happened, okay? So, so if you make it three weeks, we're getting more and more attention. Where are you? Do you know how much I love you? Do you know who you are in this world? Our group is not the same without you. How dare you miss? Like, I miss you. I get here. And so, really important, five weeks, we end up. We remove them from, from the system. You no longer belong here. But we don't do that until we make sure that you are no longer attending here. And we make sure before God... Am I okay, Lord, that I'm not going to be stewarding this child anymore? And so I want to make sure that before I end a student at five weeks, did I text you? Did I call you? Did I mail you a letter? I don't know. Did I show up at your house? Like, I'm not be the weird person, but I'm the leader that loves you, okay? I translate that for, for your level of leaders, but do you feel comfortable standing before God saying, I decided that I'm not going to disciple you? And so make sure that you, you feel comfortable before the Lord. That's what we do. I make sure that I, I did everything that I could before I removed you. Um, we encourage our leaders to do that. Um, and so now there's a couple other areas. You've got the salvation column. You've got the water baptism column. You've got the Holy Spirit baptism. And you've got what dream team are you serving at in the church? I'm looking to move you to be a fully surrendered follower of Jesus. The only thing I'm not giving my small group leaders is their tithing report because you can't do that, right? And so, but that's how you know if somebody's really fully surrendered in their hearts. So I'm looking to see, are you fully surrendered in your heart? And I want to help you. I want to aim so that when I show up, I know that little Timmy, he isn't even saved. And Billy, I can't wait to water baptize you. Can we get you water baptized? You know, whatever that might be, that's how they're able to aim. That's how they're able to move people spiritually. So we do a shepherding report. This is so important, and this is not something that we have yet, but we're creating right now. Um, so our team is actually creating uh, a metric for me to measure the health of each group, see how, how, how fully surrendered are your students by group. So I can help my leaders know if they're winning. You know, oh, it's not for like the shame. I don't believe in shame. 
I don't believe in shaming people. And so, but it's to help you know that, like, wow, I have some things I can work on. Okay, I can, I can do this because nobody said it. But, um, or they are, and they just didn't tell you. So, really intentional with that. That's our small group. Um, shepherding report is discipleship. It's where we want to see those conversations happening. Uh, and then we do a, a, a small group tracking, um, and that's basically our back door. So during every single service, we do track the attendance of the small group and the leader attendance. That's how we know if there's a problem with our front door, right, our VIP, if there's a problem with us stewarding our students to become fully surrendered, or is there a backdoor issue by group. So I can pinpoint, just like a general practitioner, find out where the issue is, dial in, and help coach people. That's it. We're just coaching. And I'll know what leaders are doing great, what leaders aren't doing great, and then get those leaders to talk because it'll make your life easier. Hey, why don't you just share what's working? That was easy, right? And so and you have that on some kind of reoccurring uh, avenue. And so um, I, I'll, I'll close with this because everything hinges on small groups. And we've got 31 small groups at the Cranberry Campus in student ministries. And, and so it's how you know which group is doing well and which group isn't. Um, and I'm not up here telling you that I'm perfect. I got some groups that aren't doing so well that I'm working on, right? They're working for progress. We're, we're, we're leading them. We're helping them. And so nobody's perfect. You know what your dirty laundry is that you wish you could just put under the bed. You know what I mean? Like, nobody can see it. So we, we all got those things, got those areas, but everything hinges on our small group leaders. And so I'll close with this question, and then we'll go into Q&A. Um, uh, I'll close with this story, I'm sorry. So we had a, a small group leader for the longest time who helped us launch our model. So Alyssa and I, like I said, we were like almost seven years in, and so we've gotten the opportunity to pay this here. We didn't have this as a church, we pioneered all of this. We started in middle school, and we carried over into high school, and now we're working on our young adult program with, with our young adult leader that's overseeing it. So we've got this amazing opportunity to do that. We had a leader that was serving for two years and she helped me pioneer our small groups. Her name was Jennifer. Um, and so what was really cool is when we shifted to this model, we weren't always there with the big ass, right? And so when we shifted to this model, uh, she shared, she was so excited because when she when she was growing up, she went to, I believe it's United Conquest. I might have said that wrong. The local, right, right here. It, and, and so maybe you, uh, I might have screwed it up. Anyway. And so she went to that church. She graduated from their youth ministry. When she graduated, they did small groups with, with a leader that was invested in their life for the four years. They didn't quite look like us, but they were the constant. And you know what's so awesome? She was like, I'm so excited because my small group leader has been in my wedding. Um, they do life with us. We still meet with them for mentoring. Now, they don't go to the same church. She, she's at our uh, Newcastle campus. They're plugged in. They're serving there. But, um, but it, it's just incredible the impact that small group leader had on her life. That they were in the way. And I think that we underestimated times the impact that we had in our students' lives. We can't really fathom because we, we look at things right now, in the now, and so it's, it's where we're at, and so we're easily swayed by our emotions, and when things aren't going good, and you don't have the attendance, you feel like you suck, and it's not true. But come on, we've all felt like that, right? And so you are, the decisions that you're making to leave these kids are going to pay off dividends you can't even imagine. And you'll be a part of their journey, and so I share that with you to encourage you and to give you hope. Your impact is bigger than you can imagine and fathom. And maybe you know that. Maybe you just need reminded of that today. Um, and so it's just awesome. And I, I'll share this with you because this leader got to do this. Um, they it, inside our school was one of the students went to the hospital and they, they had something. They were doing something. They were bedridden in the hospital, and uh, they didn't call me. And so I would I would have went. Would have loved to go to minister. They called their small group leader. And I gotta tell you, that's a bigger win. That's a bigger win. They didn't call me, and it's like, you know, selfishly inside, because we're all like, me, you know, I'm like, I wanna go, I wanna be there for you. But they didn't call me, and that's okay. They called their small group leader. And I think that that our best fruit will be on other people's streets. And and so, and we gotta we gotta look at things like that. So I'll say that to encourage you, um, leader. I I, I pray that, that you realize today. I know that when I'm done, we've got a few more things that, that um, hopefully none of this is discouraging you. That is not the heart. Hopefully um, this is giving you some ideas and some tools, and hopefully, uh, I said that a lot, hopefully. But I have facilitators at all these tables that are reminding you for ideas, and I can't wait to hear all the great things that you guys are doing. Um, and so when you hear the next thing that we're doing in student ministries, and you're like, hey, wait a minute. That was <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you. I just want to thank you in advance. You guys are awesome. Hey, uh, I love you guys. I'm having a really great time with you. Um, I'll do a couple uh, Q&A questions, and then we'll, we'll go in 10, uh, 15 minutes of round tables. So just for clarity, you have, you said you have the same small group leader that moves up in grade? When yes. You, okay. Because like, I know we, we have not split as a junior high small group leader and a senior high. So, but you would have the same, like that junior high, start with junior high and then move up. That doesn't always happen, that has happened. Okay. Uh, that would be an anomaly for us. Okay. And so what we've done is uh, we, we actually just transitioned our first um, group of small group leaders that lead in middle school. They started in fifth grade and they went all the way through eighth. And then they actually, they had such a great time that they recommitted for another four years. Okay. Um, and so they circled back. They wanted to go. They didn't want to continue on with their kids. Uh, they wanted to give their kids another voice in their life. And so when they transitioned to um, high school, they parted ways, but they still text. They're still involved. And, and it's just another leader there. And so they circled back down. And that, that has happened. Uh, this actually was the first year for us to recycle a lot of leaders. And we saw that in our high school ministry as well. A lot of graduating uh, senior leaders came back and then uh, are running ninth grade groups. Yes, Brian. Your, uh, your ratio, how many kids are in a small group, how many leaders are in a small group? I think you said it, but I didn't say it. Yeah, so uh, uh, we, we feel that a healthy group is 12 students. That's a really healthy group. Um, if you hit 15, three weeks in a row, we split you like a cell. And, and so we get really intentional. Again, that comes from us tracking the group and the group attendance. So when you're hitting 15 students, then, then we feel like, I mean, that's a fun group, that's awesome, but we want to carry on this momentum. And so we start injecting leaders, and then that's when you get leader heavy, you go from like basically two to three leaders, to four leaders, to five leaders, and then we split. And, and then we split the vice of code. Um, and, and then obviously we cherry pick on the right relationships, because you don't want that to die. It's a very intentional split, um, if you will, because relationships are everything. Yes. We do, and so in, in our context, because of just the scope of ministry, um, under me, I have um, uh, our we received our experience teams, so that would follow worship and production. It's Kendall who's in the back, so he's a staff member, but he doesn't lead those teams. Um, I'm sorry, he doesn't like directly lead those teams. He leads through high level leaders, and so you actually have a line of stuff. Sit right there. And then you also have Nate uh, over there. So uh, Nate does high school and she does middle school. So, and, and yeah, I'm sorry, they, they're not paid, they're volunteers. She's actually a student. Um, and, so, and, and, and so you know this, that there's a great call on her life. And so her parents are involved. And she's leading that team. There's like 40 some musicians on that team. Um, and so, but she's got a call uh, on her life. And so there's many leaders that are around her to help safeguard some of the needs of just leading. Uh, but we're also helping we've given her that authority and the parents and they're dialed in. I know Kendall meets with mom and dad, so here's the issues that are going on. They're very transparent. She's transparent with her parents on like, this is the crazy other parent that's bugging me and you know, and all of those things. That's a lot of weight. Um, so we're, we're very careful specifically for her. Uh, but we do lead through volunteers. That's a great question. Yes, Brian. All right. Everybody's done. Give me the nod. Let's talk with the groups. All right. Hey, and then we'll, we'll start. Uh, I'll give you about 15 minutes, okay? And we'll start at uh, 11.15.